Welcome to the Bright Vibe Podcast. At Bright Vibe, we believe everyone deserves to be happy. But in today's world, everywhere you turn, there is division and negativity. At Bright Vibe, we have created a global movement to bring 8 million people together who are inspired to live bright, live bold, and share bright vibes. Alone, it can be hard to change, but together we can change the world. Welcome to the Bright Vibe Podcast. Mike Goldman, welcome to the Bright Vibe Podcast. So happy to have you on today. Thanks, Matt. Looking forward to it. Yes, I look forward to meeting you. We've never met before. Um, I'm a little bit familiar with your work. Uh, you know, you currently have uh, your latest book out is Breakthrough Leadership Team. We're all about leadership here at Bright Vibe, self-leadership, corporate leadership, uh, home leadership, you name it. We talk about it and, and the many aspects of, of that, you know, whether you're leading a team of one or leading a team of thousands, uh, leadership is, I think, an all-encompassing thing that everybody can get better at. So let's talk a little bit about your newest book, Breakthrough Leadership Team. What's that about? Yeah, the, the focus of the book is really about what I believe is to me the most important part of building a great company. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not about strategy. It is really about building a great leadership team. Mm. And I have been coaching and consulting for about 35 years now. The last mm -hmm. 15 is my own uh, business as, as a leadership team coach. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I kind of woke up one day and always thought about my business as I help companies grow. I work with small mm -hmm. and mid-market companies, but woke up one day and said, you know, what I really do is I help build great leadership teams. That's my mm -hmm. model. I work with the mm -hmm. CEO and the leadership team. So I read a lot of books and I said, if that's what I do, if I'm really about building great leadership teams, man, I probably ought to read some more books on that mm -hmm. because I can't, you know, <laughs> thousands, you know, and, and I went on Amazon. There are thousands mm -hmm. of books, of course, mm -hmm. on leadership, dozens of books on team building. I could not find one book focused on how you structure a great leadership team, how you mm -hmm. find the right people for a leadership team, how you mm -hmm. build culture on a leadership mm -hmm. team, how you execute as a leadership team. Couldn't find a book written on it. So I said, all right, if uh, if that's the book I need and it hasn't been written, I guess I need to write it. So that's mm. what I did. Interesting. And so those just, you know, we could dive into each one of those points you just mentioned. So how to build a great leadership team, right? I mean, that's what the work's about. That's what the book's about, but that's what you ultimately do. So let's talk about that. How do you build a great leadership team? First, let, let's talk about a little bit about why, and then we'll mm -hmm. talk about, sure. about how yeah. and, and right. defining what a great leadership team is. I think the, the reason to build a great leadership team is because you want to build a great company. Right. And that's the way to do it. When I say great company, it is three things. You know, Number one, it's about top and bottom line growth, right? It's not mm -hmm. all about the dollars, but man, if you don't have the dollars, you have nothing mm -hmm. to fuel anything else. Right. You want to do. So you need that top and bottom line growth. Number mm -hmm. one. Number two, it's about creating a growing, fulfilling environment mm -hmm. for your team. Mm -hmm. And then number three, after you've done those things, it's about adding real value to society. Society right. could be your client. Society be, could, be, could be a bigger society. So that's what it's about. And, and when I think about self-leadership, I think about Three different, I don't want to call them competencies, but three different characteristics, I guess, is a great way to think mm -hmm. of it. And, and number one, I call fire. And fire is about having that fire in your belly mm -hmm. to do more, be more, mm -hmm. set bigger goals, raise the bar. Uh, the metaphor I use is you got to find that next dragon to slay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. So, yeah, so number yeah. one is fire. Number two is focus. And by focus, what I mean is the ability to be proactive in switching your focus from a disempowering focus. For mm -hmm. example, a disempowering focus may be I'm focused on what I don't want. Right, which happens a lot. How do you switch that to an empowering focus, like very simply focusing on what, what I, I want. do want? <laughs> right, yeah, so, right. so first part of self-leadership is that fire, fire mm -hmm. in your belly. Second is focus. How do you switch from a disempowering to an empowering focus. And the third is coachability. Mm. We talk a lot. I talk uh, to, to my leaders a lot about how they can be better coaches to their people. Mm -hmm. When it comes to self-leadership, you have to make sure you're coaching, that you're willing to ask for feedback. You've got that vulnerability. You're willing to hold mm -hmm. yourself accountable. You are learning and growing. So the third part of self-leadership is that coachability. 
Mm, okay. Thank you for the clarification around that. All right. Number two. Number two is proactively structuring the leadership team. Mm -hmm. and, and what I mean by that is, you know, normally when an entrepreneur founds a new business, it may be they're doing it. Next step is they got a bunch of part-time or full-time helpers, but they're really running it. And then at some point they start to realize, oh my God, I need a head of sales. I'm going to hire right. someone. I need a, a head of operations. I need somebody mm -hmm. to head up service, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and then they get to a hundred people and they're like, oh my God, everybody's leaving. We have a horrible culture. Do you think maybe I need a head of human resources? And by the way, I hate that HR term. I right. call it talent management, talent development, mm -hmm. but the, the leadership team kind of evolves. Mm -hmm. And what I suggest is you need to be proactive about structuring that team. You need to understand, even if you're one person, you probably have eight or 10 functions mm -hmm. within your business. Head of company is a function, sales, mm -hmm. marketing, technology, service, finance. There are a bunch of functions, whether you're one employee or mm -hmm. whether you've got a thousand employees. Mm -hmm. Understanding right now who's accountable for each function, the one person. Mm -hmm. And if you're a solo entrepreneur, your name is, mm -hmm. is everywhere. But Looking at your plan for growth mm -hmm. for the next four, eight, 12 quarters, I call it the 12 quarter leadership team plan. Mm -hmm. Over the next four, eight, 12 quarters, what's your plan for growth? Mm -hmm. And when you look at that plan, being proactive and saying, hey, you know what? I don't need a VP of sales right now, but given the fact that three quarters from now, I need to start bringing on 10 new clients per month. To hit mm -hmm. my growth goals, man, at that point, I'm going to need someone other than me mm -hmm. to head up sales. Here's right. the point six quarters from now where I expect we're going to have 75 employees. Mm -hmm. Probably need to think about having someone who's accountable for recruiting and onboarding and, and talent management at that point. Mm -hmm. And the, the power of doing that is that you understand two, three, four, five quarters before you have a need. Right. What that need will be. And you could start grooming internally or hiring the right way, which is hiring slow as mm -hmm. opposed to, oh my God, I need a director of HR yesterday. Go right. find somebody. And then you make right. a mistake. Right. Okay. Number three. Number three is finding the right people. Mm. So if you've got the right structure, now I've got to find the right people. And for a leadership team, I believe that leadership team has got to be made up of all A players. Mm -hmm. If you've got B players on the team, they better have the potential to be A players within six months or right. so. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that, while I, I would never say your goal, while it, it's something to strive for, say, man, I wish I had all A players, all superstars mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. my company. If you've got a company of 40, 50, 60, 200 right. people, to say our goal is 100% A players, that's a stretch, right? You're, you're right. not going to get there. You might strive for it. You're not going to get there, but I do believe on a leadership team, you need to have an understanding that A players don't work for B players very long. Right. If you've got a B player on your leadership mm -hmm. team or God forbid, a C player on your leadership team, that's got a ripple effect throughout mm -hmm. the organization. So you need the tools and techniques to make sure that you're going out there and getting the right people for the function and you're hiring A players or at least folks with the potential to become A players pretty quickly. Right. Makes sense. Number four. Number four is about building a resilient culture. Mm. And that starts on the leadership team. I have leaders come to me and say, how do we, how do we fix the culture in the company? It's mm. Like we're not fixing anything until we build the right culture on the leadership, on the leadership team. team. Because if you right. do that, going to cascade down. There's still work to do down below the leadership team. But if you don't have the right culture on the leadership team, and I, when I talk about culture, I talk about the three V's, mm -hmm. values, vision, and vulnerability. Mm. Okay. Those three things, you need a leadership team that is living and breathing those three V's. They don't just understand the vision. They're evangelists of the vision. They don't just understand your values as a company. They're a model of those core values. They mm -hmm. don't just have good conversations on the leadership team. They're vulnerable enough and trusting mm -hmm. enough. Right. And in this, in today's times, that's never been more evident that we need 
resilient cultures because we're going to, you're going to hit something, whether you're being disrupted by industry or disrupted by, well, supply chain, disrupted by cycles in the COVID financial markets, the Ukraine, just in, 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 right, all of the above, right? Monkey pox, you name it. <laughs> right. Number five. Number five is about executing with discipline as a team. It's being able to remove drama from the day to day, hold people accountable. I, I talk about three disciplines with my clients in the book, three disciplines of execution. One is aligning around a small number of priorities, right? We know if everything's a priority, nothing's a priority. Right. So aligning around a small number of priorities, number one. Number two, measuring those things that matters. How do I measure success? What are the right key performance indicators mm -hmm. to measure how I'm doing you know, in the business? And the third is having the right planning and communication rhythm. The mm -hmm. right structure of when annual planning and quarterly mm -hmm. planning and monthly check-in and education and weekly accountability meetings mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. daily huddles. What's that right rhythm of planning and communication? Yeah, yeah, right. And the sixth, what's the sixth thing? The sixth to... one is developing and, and improving as a team, mm. continuously developing and improving. So the sixth is about assessing your talent, number one, with my clients. We do a talent assessment every quarter where we look mm. one level down from that leadership team, who mm -hmm. are the A players, B players, C players, and what I call toxic C players. And we use a mm. tool that mm -hmm. I specifically designed for that. So, so. Developing and improving is about assessing your talent, mm -hmm. coaching your talent, developing your talent, and when need be, making that hard decision to cut the cord on folks that don't belong on the team. So for that solo entrepreneur, what's the most critical things that you think that they should be thinking about? A community of folks mm -hmm. that will support them. I don't think there's anything more, you know, it's not about make sure you come up with the right strategy. Make sure mm -hmm. that first mm -hmm. hire is an A player. It's a right. thousand things people are going to tell you. Some mm -hmm. of them are right. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of them are right, but it's overwhelming. You can't right. do 176 things. The biggest mistake when I, I made mm -hmm. when I started my first mm -hmm. business 18 years ago was I'm a smart guy. I could figure this out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it didn't work out all that well. Okay. Yeah. So, so I've done that. Having, having the right community to support you, and that's everything from your professionals, you know, the right yep. accountant and yep. the right yep. attorney and, and all that stuff. Having a coach mm -hmm. is so important. I'm a coach and I've right. had a coach for the better part of the last 16, 17 right. years. I've had a, a couple of different coaches. So having the, those professional services folks, having a coach that mm -hmm. can help challenge you, pat you on mm -hmm. the back when you need it, kick you in the ass when you need it, open mm -hmm. your eyes to some new way, ways of looking at things. Family's important, right? Mm -hmm. Now this is, mm -hmm. you can't, you know, you can pick a coach, you can't pick your family, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Yep. This, this podcast is so fun for me because it's always serendipitous because in every moment I get some insight into directions that I need to look at. I have really been thinking lately about just kind of taking our community and just turning it into basically an entrepreneurial small business owner support company and really the organization, because it's like, I've been a member and I think I read in your, your bio, but I've been a member of YPO for 17 years, something like this. Right. So I have my forum group, right? That's what they call it. YPO, yeah. which you're talking about your mastermind, we call it forum or they do an YPO. And so and I've had mine yesterday and, and again, it was just one of those, we do life together. Um, you know, we meet monthly and it's about four hours that we meet, uh, once a month, but as a business owner, it doesn't matter if you're just starting or been in business, you know, 50 years, there's some loneliness when you're at the top. If you're the person where the buck stops, there's a certain amount of loneliness. There's a certain amount of isolation, unless you have surrounded yourself with some type of reliable, consistent community of support. To your point, it can't just be, you know, some buddies, because a lot of times buddies don't understand, you know, if they have a job. They're not going to understand the pressures and the stress of, of having to literally, to your point, do something to pay the mortgage, right? And I can't think of a better, and I'm going to get up on my soapbox here a little bit, so thank you for the airtime, but I can't think of a better group of people to support than the people who are creating the most jobs in, in, in this country anyway, or small business owners. If you've ever 
been around business at all, you look at it, statistically, small businesses create, I think it's 80% of the jobs in this country. And yet I just don't see a ton. I know myself, I've been an entrepreneur for 30 years. And what you talked about just, I think, is the hammer hitting the nail on the head, which is you got to have that support system because without that support system, you make decisions that are in isolation that aren't full you know, you're not getting the full view of all of the information you could have when you have a consistent support structure. The thing about mastermind groups typically, or in our situation, my situation, the form, is these people can be very objective because they don't have any stake other than what is best for me, right? There's no ulterior motives. You know, they're not trying to get my business. It doesn't work that way. We sign a thing that says we're not going to do business together, right? <laughs> because you, you want that true support. So I think it's so, this has really been on my mind for about, I don't know, several several months, if not longer, but I just thought it is very lonely proposition if you don't have that community. And for a lot of, especially small entrepreneurs and, you know, or individual, there's more probably, what do we call them? Solo, solopreneurs. Is that what the term is? Sure. There's most, there's gotta be more solopreneurs than there's ever been in the history of at least the United States right now, because people can work remotely. Right. So, but where's the support system? Where's the guidance on, on just basic things, taxation, what kind Let of company? Alone all gonna, the emotional stuff. Right, right. Without all the emotional stuff, right? And and it can be, I think it's the most rewarding and the most challenging thing you can do in your life. One of the most challenging is owning your own deal, right? Owning yeah, your own I, I tell own, people that, that, you know, again, I've been on this entrepreneurial journey for, for 18 years now. Uh -huh. I look back at it now and say, there is no doubt that was the best decision uh, right. I ever made in my life. I can't believe the life I'm living and, and what I get right. to do. But man, if I didn't have the right support system around me, and initially I didn't, other than my wife, I didn't, then right. I built it up. If I didn't have the right support system around me, I'd be one of those folks in a job I didn't like very much, just mm -hmm. counting the years until retirement. And I think that's a pretty sad way to live. Well, I appreciate you coming on today, Mike. And I'm sure we'll you know, invite you to come back on the show anytime you'd like. People can find more about you at mike-goldman.com. Uh, that's where your books are, your coaching. You've got some courses out there, but certainly if you'd like more information about Mike, you can go out and check that out. But uh, I really appreciate you coming on today and having the conversation. I, I enjoyed it. Matt, thank you. It was fun. I'll definitely come back and work with the mastermind group you build. Uh, I know. love it. I I'm love it. Thank you. thank you so much, Mike. All right. Have a good one. Thank you for being a part of the Bright Vibe podcast. For more information, go to brightvibe.com. That's B-R-I-T-E, vibe, B-I-B-E.com. Thank you for listening.